So today I have this Monitor Audio Subwoofer, RSW12, that I'm looking at. And uh, the problem it was brought in for is it has a hum. So let me go ahead and turn the power on to it. You might be able to hear it in the audio, but the uh, I have a little MP3 player. And as you can tell, the uh, you may be able to see it. It actually works. Seems to work pretty well. But the problem is it has this low hum to the audio. And um, right now I've got it connected over here to the uh, subwoofer enclosure because it has a uh, volume and tone control built in to the box itself. And it's this cable that you may be able to see right here. And uh, it connects onto the main board. So let me go ahead and unplug that. So I've got that disconnected now and uh, with it unplugged I can move everything away. Uh, it's got a toroidal power transformer that I'll leave sitting here. And then you can see the uh, workings of the subwoofer itself. It's a digital amplifier, which means it uh, uses an extreme high frequency digital signal to get uh, a lot of power out of a very small box. Uh, they claim it to be a 500 watt RMS amplifier. I don't know how accurate that is, but um, I'm sure it can uh, at least do a couple hundred watts RMS pretty easily in a pretty small uh, footprint here. So I'm going to start by uh, doing the troubleshooting on this. Um, I can see that uh, it's got two main filter caps. Could have a problem with those. Um, it's got a small little standby uh, or small little power supply here, as well as over here on this circuit board, there's a standby power supply. So I'll show you how to try to find the uh, source of that hum without using uh, like an oscilloscope or anything like that, just using a, a regular uh, digital voltmeter. So start by uh, right here there's three ICs. They are analog regulator ICs and uh, two of them are 7812s which means it's a positive 12 volt regulator IC. Uh, it requires about 2 volts more input than it outputs and it'll take up to about 30-35 volts input and still give you a 12 volt at one amp output. Now they don't have these heat sinked, so you won't get the full current capability. Uh, so uh, this one and this one are both positive 12 volt regulators. This is a 7912 IC and that's a negative 12 volt regulator. So it looks like they're running the preamp circuitry on plus and minus 12 volts. So that way the uh, sine wave has a potentially a 24 volt swing from the positive rail to the negative rail. And then they feed that uh, back here into the digital processing circuit, which is on these two little stand-up circuit boards. And then over here, there's uh, two little output transistors for the positive side. And then uh, two more po output transistors for the negative side. And uh, the capacitors they have here are rated at 80 volts. I don't believe they're running 80 volts on them. I think they're only running about 40 or 50 volts positive and 40, 50 volts negative. But that would allow uh, potentially a 100 volt peak to peak uh, waveform to be fed into this 4 ohm subwoofer. So you definitely could get uh, uh, quite a few watts out of the small little digital amplifier. Okay, so I've got the board exposed here. And uh, these three terminals right here feed from the power transformer. It's a center tapped, so there's a uh, bridge rectifier, the center goes to ground, and that's how they achieve a positive and a negative voltage. So let's just go ahead and uh, we'll look at the AC voltage going into the, trans into the uh, bridge rectifier. Now I've got 31 volts AC. And I've got 35 volts DC coming out. Now in respect to ground, I should have approximately about plus and minus 17 volts. I've got 18.8 .8 there. And I'm on the wrong 
in. Now I've got 16 volts there. So now let's troubleshoot this. Uh, real quick, I'll show you the main filter cap voltage over here. I've got uh, 55 volts. You can't see where the probes are on that one, but another 55 volts. Uh, so the total voltage there running the amplifier is 111 volts. So conceivably, uh, amplifier driven at full potential could deliver 111 volts, 111 volt sine wave to the speaker. So now to troubleshoot this without using an oscilloscope would be quite easy just to look on the uh, circuit board and find out where the waveform is. Um, to find a, uh, a bad capacitor, which is what I suspect it is, I'm going to put my meter on the AC volts. And uh, next I'm going to measure, these are two capacitors, the main filter capacitors. And I've got 3.2 volts AC on that one. My probe will stay on. But I've only got 1.3 volts AC on that one. And these feed into these two regulators right here. And so let me get my negative lead on a ground here. And so I've got negative 18 going into this IC regulator. And I've got a minus 1196, so that's a negative regulator. Positive 16 going into this one. Ground on the center pin on that one. And then I should have 12 volts coming out. Now on the third one over here, let's find out where our pins are. It's taken it off another source. So we can just look at the voltage difference between the two pins. 19 volts going in. And this should be our output, 11.93. So it's a 12 volt regulator. Anyhow, um, we'll go back to looking at the voltage on AC and, uh, so this is the input to the 78, the 7912 negative regulator. It's got 1.3 volts of AC approximately going into it. And it should do a pretty good job of regulating that down. And I've got zero volts AC on the output filter capacitor. It's got 12 volts. Now this is the, uh, other output filter capacitor right here. Now my hand's probably right in the way. And I've got 11.8 volts there. Let's go back to AC. And as you can see, I've got 0.137 volts of AC coming out of that regulator. So I believe that is the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the power off. I'm going to take this away and I'm going to bring in my ESR meter that you may have seen before. I can't remember where I picked up this ESR meter. ESR is uh, equivalent series resistance. So with the lead shorted you should have uh, zero ohms. So first I'm going to look at this one that tested fairly well. Um, it says about 6 ohms. Now these are 220 microfarad capacitors. I would expect to see 1 ohm or less when you ESR these capacitors. This one actually says um, about 17 or 18 ohms, which is definitely bad. And that's the one I suspected is doing all the problems. Now let's check the output filter capacitors. Uh, that one reads about 2 ohms. That's actually pretty good. And this one reads a little less than 2, about 1.5 ohms, which is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those capacitors out of the circuit and uh, test them out of the circuit and see what we get. Okay, so I've got the three capacitors out of the board. And I wanted to show you this little uh, MK168 transistor tester that I have. You can use it to test. Uh, transistors, uh, field effect transistors, IGBT transistors, as well as capacitors, diodes, resistors, and uh, it'll show you inductance of a coil. So I've got the uh, capacitor I had marked with the plus on the top of it to indicate it was out of the positive 
12 volt power supply. You just hook it up to the leads and hit the test button on the unit. And it'll shortly give you an answer as to what it sees. And this one, it can't even test the uh, capacitor so bad. So we'll go ahead and go for the one that was on the uh, second 12 volt power supply. And we'll hit the test button. And that one reads uh, 181 microfarads with an ESR of 3.2 ohms. Okay, here's the capacitor that was on the negative 12 volt power supply. And we'll go ahead and test that with the MK168 transistor tester. And it shows 131.8 microfarads with an ESR of 16 ohms. That's pretty bad for a 220 microfarad capacitor. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show you these on the uh, analog ESR meter as well. So let's start with the old capacitors first. Uh, this one shows an ESR of about 3 ohms, which is definitely bad. Now the ESR tester showed 14 ohms. Uh, this one actually shows an ESR of up in uh, hundreds of ohms, which is why the uh, transistor tester could not even test it. And this last one here shows an ESR of about 25 ohms. Uh, that's the one that's on the negative power supply. The one that was in the hundreds of ohms is the one that's on the positive power supply. And by comparison, we'll go ahead and test these new ones. And it shows you between 0 and 1 ohm. If I short the leads together, then it shows you 0 ohms. Now, I believe that the... Uh, the MK168 transistor tester tests at a much higher frequency. Uh, therefore, it shows the ESR uh, a little more accurately than this uh, analog ESR meter does, which I believe tests at a lower frequency. So the uh, MK168 would be a good choice if you were going to be using uh, uh, switch mode power supply repairs but the uh, standard ESR tester can do a great job uh, testing uh, uh, just analog uh, 60 hertz power supplies like this one is. Anyhow, I'm going to put those new capacitors in there and we'll uh, give it a test run here in just a minute. Okay, so here's my board. I've got the new parts in it. Uh, first off, I want to measure the DC voltages and we'll see what we have on the two capacitors. I've got a uh, minus 20 volts and a plus 19.5, so our voltages are much more centered before they were swung off quite a ways. So on uh, AC, I've got 31 volts coming in. And I've got about 40 volts leaving the bridge rectifier. So now the all-important test Let's look at the AC voltages on these two capacitors. We had a 1 point, I think 1.9 and about 3 and about a half volts. Now we have 0.7 volts of ripple on that capacitor out of 20. And we have 1 volt out of 20. Now these regulators can handle that very much, very much better than they could handle the three and a half volts on a 16 volt input. So on the one regulator, I believe what was happening was the DC input voltage was only about 16 volts. And with a three and a half volt ripple on that, it might've been dropping below the 14 volt minimum necessary to output the 12 volt from that regulator. And I think that's why it was uh, developing that hum in the audio. Uh, let me go ahead and turn some audio back on to make sure the speaker works. Okay, I have the volume control reconnected. Let's go ahead and turn the power on. Wait for the light to turn green over here. Turn on the MP3 player. And we'll give it some audio here. working just fine. And we'll 
we'll go ahead and get it all put back together and we'll give it a final test. Okay, so here is the Monitor Audio RSW12 all put back together. I certainly hope you enjoyed the uh, repair of this subwoofer. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. And if you could be so kind as to make a donation if you enjoyed this video, the link is on my YouTube channel homepage. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.